What's up YouTube, MTG Biggie here and I am back finally. It feels like a long time since my last video on this channel, although I know it's only been about a week or so. Um, for those who didn't know, I live in Florida and we just had a giant ass hurricane come through here. So that's kind of what kept me off of the YouTubes for a little bit. But everyone's safe, we are back. And um, I wanted to make a video about some spoilers, but not from Ixalan. We're going to talk about Iconic Masters. Because as a legacy player, and a person who cares about cards that are not in standard quite a bit, uh, this is a pretty interesting set. So I'll pull up Mythic Spoiler here, and we'll go through some. Um, first and foremost, the biggest most important spoiler I think of the set has to be Mana Drain. Um, for those who have never played with the card Mana Drain, I recommend it highly in, um, <clears throat> in Vintage and in um, even EDH I guess it's legal. But yeah, incredibly powerful card. Two mana, counter target spell, and then you make colorless mana on your uh, main phase equal to the converted mana cost of the spell you counter. Insane. Um, I love this card. I used to own a playset of Legends Mana Drains back in the day. Played them in my Oath of Druids control deck. Very great card. Very iconic. Uh, fittingly so. And the new artwork looks great. So I'll always have a place in my heart for the original Legends artwork, but... I can't complain about this new artwork. Um, Necropotence, another very iconic card. Um, Channel, yet another iconic uh, old, old school magic card from the beginning of the game. Then we have the Praetor Cycle is back at Mythic. Elish Norn, some of the best art in modern magic, I think. Um, yeah, just a great card. Kiki Jiki, <clears throat> modern staple and Kiki Cord um, combos with the uh, basically replaces Splinter Twin and Splinter Twin style combo decks, which are now totally different. But a uh, very good modern card. Primeval Titan, Scape Shift is all over the place. Uh, green Red Valakut, so that's a solid reprint to keep that price in check. I'm not a Magic Finance guy, but I do like seeing all these reprints to keep singles in check <clears throat> particularly for somebody that doesn't own mana drain anymore maybe now i pick up a few of these who knows um the dragons from um kamigawa block are back ancestral vision a card i very much had interest in playing in modern when it was unbanned and just didn't want to invest that sort of money into. Very cool artwork as well, so now may be the time to pick them up at rare, not mythic, which is nice. <clears throat> Cryptic Command, another card that's been hovering in like the $20 range. Very nice to see. Um, we didn't get a ton for Death and Taxes. Resto, so if you're playing modern Death and Taxes, that'll keep that price in check. Um, Thoughtseize, another great reprint, original Lorwyn art, which is very cool. I have always enjoyed um, Thoughtseize as a card, uh, playing with and against it. I think it's a very good interactive sort of magic card, and um, leads to a lot of decision making, which I find important. Um, Sarah Ascendant was pretty pricey, another piece for uh, Soul Sisters and Modern. If you want to play that deck, just like the worst mono white deck in uh, modern, just because death and tax is still a thing. And like for limited purposes, we have some good removal Doomblade, Fireball, stuff like that. Um, sideboard piece for death and tax modern, Forge Tinder, pretty sweet. Very iconic, Sarah Angel, that's cool to see. Um, been around since the beginning. The original good white creature. Swords to Plowshares. So those who don't have a set for Legacy. Go ahead and scoop them up. Though they weren't expensive before. They'll surely be less expensive now. Taylor Swift Swear. 
<clears throat> incredibly good uh, red creature. Probably, probably in the top three greatest red creatures ever printed. Um, I played Burn for quite a while. In both um, standard, I played a Tarka Red, and in modern, I played a uh, Naya Burn. So very good card to see. Rift Bolt. Those who wanted to start picking up pieces for Burn in Modern, there's a couple for you there. I know Rift Bolt was climbing a little bit. Um, bunch of other commons, uncommons. Don't have time to go through all of those. But, I'm going to scoot down here a little bit. A lot of cards that make the limited environment look really, really fun. Um, some other big hitters. Knight of the Reliquary. I know this guy's all over modern and in legacy a little bit. Um, or this girl, I guess, if we're being accurate. Um, very iconic card to me, Spirit Monger. I was playing the game when this card came out and we were all like, holy shit, that card is really insanely good. Um, I mean, I think it's still a solid creature, but a 5-mana 6-6 six, six with a couple like solid abilities is actually not too far ahead of the curve now um, and some cool multicolored com uncommons electrolyze Zorius charm lightning helix again another burn piece uh, what I'm most excited for and what I'm looking to invest the most in as far as the set goes ether vial great to see this back at rare um, I only have one play set, and I play both Legacy and Modern Death and Taxes, and I play Merfolk in Modern, so I play three decks that use this card, and I desperately need to get another play set, um, just so I don't have to switch them in and out of sleeves, because I like double sleeve my Legacy decks, but not my Modern deck, and uh, stuff like that, so it's annoying, but definitely looking forward to to picking up another set of Aether Vials once they come down a bit. Mishra's Bobble was insanely expensive for an uncommon. Hopefully this brings it back down to reality. And then the lands. Grove of the Burn Willows, Horizon Canopy. Both just slam dunks for like a good land set to have. Or a good pair of lands to have in your set at rare. And that's pretty much the gist of it. I think the set's going to be a blast to draft. I'm going to at least try to draft once or twice. Um, and maybe pick up a sealed box or two. Not entirely sure, but I'm very excited to see this sort of stuff. I'm not the sort that is against reprints for the sake of... Uh, you know, preserving the value of collections. I do think that's important to an extent... But I play the game to play the game, and there are cards that I don't own because I missed a large chunk of magic while I wasn't playing. So, it's cool to see this sort of stuff and see Wizards put out not only, like, some really key reprints, but make a really cool set, too. Um, those who didn't notice, they brought back a lot of the Cons of Tark Hero Block Dragon's Matter cards, which is pretty cool, um... Somewhere in here is Foultongue Invocation, Draconic Roar, and stuff like that. And you get to play in an environment where those cards from Dragons of Tarkir um, can interact with dragons from Kamigawa, or Kamigawa. So, it'll be interesting to, to play around with, and to draft, and to just have a fun time playing with this set. Um, what do you guys think of the set? How do you feel about it? Do you plan on drafting? What are some cards that you're looking forward to uh, having the prices come down on a bit? I look forward to hearing all of that in the comments down below. Um, and always, please like, subscribe, tell your friends, send them over this way. We've got a cool little community, and I'd like to talk about some cards with all of you guys. So I will see you again soon. Um, and if you haven't, I'll link it down below um, the video for the Ixalan spoilers that I made that we're talking about making a brew for Ixalan Standard. So go check that video out. Vote in the poll that's on that video. And um, I'll also link 
the vlog from the hurricane here in Florida because I did vlog it. So those who aren't in the know uh, know what I was dealing with for the last couple days or so. Um, either way, I'll talk to you guys again very soon.